Okay, let's do a torque practice problem. So for this problem, you're gonna need your textbook. And this one is going to be on page 250. And we're just gonna do simply number one to get started. A couple of things before we get started about torque, however. Uh, if you recall when we talked about force, Right? We said that a force is something that causes acceleration. Well, there's an analog for that when we talk about rotation, and that is what we call torque. And so what a torque does is a torque causes rotation. And much like when we did problems with forces, we had to find net force using free body diagrams and add up all the forces to find the acceleration. Uh, the same thing for torque is that we'll also have to do the same thing finding what the net torque is uh, to see what direction the rotation is. Some problems are more straightforward, some are a little bit more involved, but essentially that's the same idea. Right? When we talked about force, we know that force is mass times acceleration and then we would have to add up all the forces using the net force. And so there's a few ways that we can find out torque, but torque, that's a tau, is going to be force times our lever arm, which is the distance, and then we have this sine theta. So what does the sine theta mean? The sine theta means that force and displacement, right, they have to be perpendicular to one another. If they're perpendicular to one another, then we have a torque. If force and displacement happen to be parallel to one another, then we don't have torque, we have work. One other note is that when you have force and displacement perpendicular to one another, the unit is just simply a Newton meter, and we don't have another way of abbreviating that. If, however, we have the force and the displacement parallel to each other, then the Newton times meter becomes a joule. So even though they both have Newton and meter, these are perpendicular, and then these over here for work, they are parallel, that's a joule, okay? So let's go and do a practice problem. Let me just erase this for you here. Do, 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 do. Still erasing, still erasing, and there we go. So on page 250 in your book, we're just going to do the first one. Uh, the question reads, it says, find the magnitude of the torque produced by a 3 Newton force applied to a door at a perpendicular distance of 0.25 meters from the hinge. So when we do this one, this one's fairly straightforward. We want to find the torque. And it says that the force that was used in this case is three newtons. It says perpendicular, so we've got our angle is 90 degrees. And then we've got our distance, which is the lever arm in this case, 0.25 meters. So this one's fairly straightforward because it says that torque equals FD times the sine of theta. And here's kind of the nice thing about when we have uh, a perpendicular, is that the sine of 90 degrees is simply one. So when you have a case where you're dealing with 90 degrees for your angle, then the whole business of the sine theta, you don't even have to worry about that. It, it basically just goes away. And because that's the case, I'm just going to write it that way. I'm just gonna actually get rid of this right here. And so then our torque would just simply be Fd and that would be the equation that we can use to solve this problem. So then the torque equals, we've got our three newtons, and we have our 0.25 meters, and when we multiply those together, we have 0.75 newton meters, and that is the answer for number one, 0.75 newton meters. We don't shorten that to joule, because the angle is perpendicular, it's 90 degrees. Um, the key for doing these problems is that sometimes we have to figure out what the angle is. So here is a little 
hint or a little preview for a, another problem that you might see coming up. Let's say, for example, that I have a pendulum. And so here would be the support beam. And then the pendulum would be attached here. And if it could hang straight downward, this is where it would be when it's at rest. But if it's over here, and there's the mass that's swinging, and it's making some angle with that perpendicular line, right? The length of the pendulum, that would be the same as the distance in our torque equation. And we know that from this point, let me use a different color. How about this one? We know that from here, if I started to draw like free body diagrams, gravity would be pulling downward. Now in this case, what we need to do is we need to find the force that's perpendicular to our lever arm. Well, that would mean that we would need something that is along this side right here, that dotted line, right? Because this is our 90 degrees. Well, we know how to do this because we've been doing free body diagrams for a while. So if I just draw in a component of our FG, We'll use this again here. So actually, let's use another color so that it shows up. How about this one? So this part right here, this arrow, this is the component, this color here, that is perpendicular to FG. If I made this my y-axis, then this would be the x-axis. So it's this force right here, that F, which would be causing the torque. And it turns out if you know this angle here, you can figure out what this angle is and you should be able to get this side. And that is the hint that I'm giving you that you might uh, need for some other problems. So good luck with this problem and some of the other ones that have been assigned. And if you have any questions, you can post those online and I'll be happy to answer them. I will post the solutions to this very soon. We'll talk to you soon.